I'm sharing my screen. So in today's sessions, uh, we are talking about the series two, and then session two we are taking the previous session was on the master types of report. We know the vendor master, customer master, these type of reports, and today's session is for the transactions type of report. So we know the sales register, purchase register, where we want the dump of all the transactions. And the, the main thing about the transaction report is it requires uh, the consideration to be taken for the performance also. Because in the transaction report, you will get a huge number of records. And not always you, you should use the just ER to generate the report. Because in the ER, you can generate the report, but at the same time, you should use some mechanism to store it somewhere. Because if we are not doing this, just imagine a, a sales register we are trying to generate. Even for a month, it will be very huge, right? Based on the client's business. So they use some different different mechanism to store that data and take data, data and send it outside the system and keep it in the external systems. But uh, our focus is to generate the report mainly. Thereafter, we can do anything with that data, but at least we should know how to generate the transition type of reports, what consideration we should take care. Uh, before moving to like in the earlier session, I also explained the our book we have published. So I'm not going to take much time on it, but yeah, still uh, the book, we have published the book along with Ramita Chaurasia. And our book is available on Amazon, Google Play, and then Blue Rose publication site. You can directly search the name also electronic reporting book on day 65. You will get all the links directly. And in the Google Play book, we have 70 sample pages we have given so that we can take the reference of the sample pages and also see the index. We'll also try to touch up on some points wherever required from the book. So we are trying to cover these samples in our uh, complete series. So today's session is focused on the transition type of report. And gradually we will uh, reach to uh, the end. So this is our earliest slide like report can be generated in the XML, Excel, CSV, these things. So I'm not going to take much time on it. Our main focus will be on the demo itself because it will take a lot of time there itself. So I'm taking you to the environment. I hope my screen is visible like D50 have a screen, correct? Yes. Yeah, thank you for confirmation. So uh, what I want to share first like a, in the session, I will try to show you the reports which we have developed and what are the learnings from it and how to build that report uh, and how to construct, understand the things. We'll take simple examples like uh, we know the sales register very well. In the sales register, what we actually do, we want that line level data where we should have all the customer, we should have the site warehouse, then item ID and related to its quantity, price, and all those things, even the text part. So we want all these things in a register format. So in the standard report, when we try to generate, there are some data entities related to the cost invoice trans, I mean, line level data, but it will not have much details. But we know the tables. If I talk about the posted sales, it will be available in the posted transactions. So we are familiar with this screen, posted invoice, sales invoices. And uh, the main table is the cust invoice jar table. We can say the header, header level table. And then 
the line level data is on the trust invoice trans. So why I'm using these two tables because this will be the base line for us. And after getting these two data, we might require more data on the text trans. So here uh, we can see these are the posted invoices. If we look at the table name, we can see this is trust invoice jar, the header level data. And there could be multiple tables as well, but I'm not talking about all. First, we are trying to create a base. If I open any one of the invoice, we can see the lines. At the line level, if we right click and see, it is a cursed invoice trans. So we know that these are the header and line level relation is there. We can get all these data. So since in our sale register, we want the item level data. And even if there is a posted sales tax, we should also get the tax level data also. So how to relate these things? So we want the posted invoice. Now I will try to show you how we were actually doing it. And sometimes and many of you might be doing this way and uh, how we can improvise the same. So first I will show this model. In the previous session, we have covered like how to show, uh, prepare the route and record list. And then below that, we can logically group the things. Let's say document info. So we have kept document type. It could be sales invoice, credit note, debit note. Then document date, order account. It means the customer order account, customer invoice account. Then name, then invoice ID. Sales order number, these are the references related to the document. Then we, if we talk about the item, item details, we can see related to item in the site, warehouse, batch, size, all the dimensions we, are take, we have taken. So these are the logical grouping. We know that in, for the tax, we can have the supplier, buyer, GST, and taxable value, CGST, GST, these things we, we require generally. Other line level information, if you want to capture, we have also captured additional one, two, three. We do not require to uh, prepare every time a new field. We can utilize the same. Even if we want, we can also add it. As, uh, similarly, other info header details, we have kept uh, some additional fields. So this is the way uh, we prepare the model. And we are much aware about it, so I'm not talking much on it. If you have any query, you can help. Uh, so basis that model, we are trying to prepare a model mapping. So first I will show the approach which we generally use and uh, how we should in improvise it. If I go to the designer, we can see at the left side, I have added one of the cursed invoice trans, the line level data. And at the right side, we have this record list. We have just binded it. So we know whatever records are coming in the cursed invoice trans table, we want that data. So if I have already added this table, so I should be able to get the details. Now, if I talk about the cursed invoice trans, now let's talk about one by one and we'll try to explain you the things. Let's say if I talk about the document type. So how to understand the document type? We might use some logic. So here what we have done, like in the cash invoice trans, we will have the item related details, quantity, price, all those things. But to get the header level data, we should go to the relation. And in the relation, we should go to the many to one relation because for multiple lines, there would be single header. From here, we should go to the cursed invoice jar. This is one of the way of doing it. Cursed invoice jar and then feed. We can get the data, but there is a limitation to it. If we try to utilize this relation, it will impact the overall performance. Because what system will do, let's say there are 1000 lines, for each of the line, it will go to this relation, search that record and present to you. It means to get, let's say, custom invoice jar, I want one field, let's say 
invoice account I want, the customer invoice account. So to get that invoice account, system will go for each of the each of the line. It will go to that relation and try to run. So it means thousand time it will run, and every time it will search for the customer invoice journal table. So there is the uh, that is the reason we use the join function. So what we do, we add a customer invoice trans. Below that we add the customer invoice journal. We make a join. In that case, system prepares uh, run the query at only once. It prepare all the record list and then start uh, pushing the data here. So that's the main thing you can uh, take from here. Like uh, we should not directly or blind, blindly use the relations. Even if we have the relation uh, for one of one or two fields, we should go with some different approach. I will demonstrate the approach. What I want to say. So earlier, how I used to do which I'm not recommending to use. I'm just telling you what not to do. So in the customer invoice trans, we used to create all the record, all the fields. Let's say document date, and I'm getting this date. Okay, from the at the rate date, it means from the same table. If I want to get the detail of, let's say customer reference, there's a field in the header. So what I'm doing? At the rate relation customer voyager. So this is not the right way of doing it. Even if we want some data to be picked from this table, we should utilize some function. So this is one of the way we have done. So here we can see all the fields, batch, size, color, wherever possible. We have taken this method, invent div. And get the invent color ID, size ID, batch ID. But what we normally suggest, since we are trying to use the custom voice jet or trans table, so we should also bind or uh, make a join with the invent dim table so that we can get all the records. So instead of using this methods directly, I mean, we can use it for some of the cases, but not all. So to prepare the sales register kind of data, what approach we should follow. I will just give a glance of it so that you can understand how it can be written in a proper way. So to get those data, what we can actually do, we can add all the tables required, custom invoice jar, custom invoice trans, we have added from here table record, then add root. We have added similar way, custom invoice jar, custom invoice trans. This way we have added all the related tables. Invoice jar this, then invent location for the warehouse, invent table for the item related details. Similarly for text data, we have added the text trans table. So, to make this join, what we did, custom wise jar, custom wise trans. We have both the tables. So we have taken the base table as custom wise jar. From here, calculated field. Then we have added the custom wise trans table. So below the custom wise jar, we are adding the custom wise trans table. So since I have already added, I am going to show you what I have written. Edit. So we have written like cast invoice filter, cast invoice trans table using multiple conditions like invoice ID should be equivalent to invoice ID. Then cast invoice trans invoice date should be equivalent. Then sales ID, the sales order number should be equivalent. If we go with this relation, we will get all the related line data. I mean the custom wise trans data. So here we have added the custom wise trans table. Similarly, as per the requirement here, we might not have used the invoice in one dim table, but we can also add the in one dim table and then make uh, adding the join itself. So after adding this table, let's say here we have we require some data from the sales table also. 
Sales table means sales order header table. Similarly, we have added the sales table. And below that table, as per the requirement, because we required some data from the header also, the dimensions. So we have added the dimension attribute value set table also. So this way we can just identify all the related tables, which will be part of our join. So similarly, we have tried to add it, all the related tables. In one table, we have also added. So after adding these many tables, we prepared a join. So how we prepare the join? From the join button, add root. Then we gave some name like join, touch invoice, jar, and trans. This way we can give the name and edit join. So I'm showing you the join already created so that you can identify the things. Edit join. So here we have added all the related tables. First table was customizer. From here we have added. Then we selected the next table customize trans. Then we added again. So we similarly we have added all the related tables which we have added as a filter. So after adding these filters, we should also decide which uh, type of join we want to use. So since we know that uh, our data will be in the cast invoice jar in trans, it will be definitely available. So it will be like an inner join. Thereafter, we can see sales table as an inner join also or outer also. If we are sure that uh, our sales table, I mean sales order data will remain as it is, then we can use the inner join and if we are suspecting that uh, sales order header can be deleted after posting so that can be outer join because if sales order table has been deleted then using the inner join it will not showcase the record we can use the outer join as well so it means if the sales table is also deleted still we will be able to generate the report it is important to select manually this in memory to query. This is very much important while we are making the join. Since we have only used the filter function, it is definitely queryable. So from here, we have selected the query function and I'm telling you it's like a by default, it comes as in memory. And if we are not selecting it, you will face a lot of performance issue. Now how to identify it? I can also tell you. So here, we have taken care of these things. Now, after preparing the join, so this is the main table which I was telling. And now I want the text data also. So how to get that text data? And how we were doing earlier and how we should do. So I have uh, come to the previous page also. So. If I come here and want to see one of the things. Here we can see for the CGST amount what we did. At the rate, then one to many relation with the text trans underscore IN table. Because we know for each of the line there is a relation with the text trans and IN table also. So we went to the one to many relation. Then basis that relation dot text code equal to CGST. We got the posted amount. It means what we are trying to do. We want to give the filtration basis the relation. This is again a very bad way of writing. The right way of write, uh, writing this code is like uh, what system is actually doing. I'm telling you. So what system is actually doing for each of the line? It is going to that particular line and taking all the text trans data every time. And then while doing the filter, it is searching for complete text trans table dot text code, and then it is searching equivalent to the CGST. So it's like a for generating a 1000 line record. It is going in loop again and again for each of the records to the complete table. So this is not the right way of doing it. So why, uh, how we should write it? 
So instead of using this type of join directly, we should add that table separately as a table record from here. Table record, then text trans. Then after adding this, we should prepare a function. How to prepare that function? I can just explain you here. So to make a function, we should have some uh, parent uh, node also. So how we do it? Like we can prepare empty container, add functions. OK. So here we have added function as a container. Below that, we want our code, our text trans. And how to add that text trans as a field? So I'm just taking the baseline from here. So for the text trans, we have the relation of invent trans ID should be equivalent to the invent trans ID which we are passing, then voucher, then transaction date. So these are the three fields which we need to compare. So we are trying to prepare a function. So below that container, Calculator field. To identify the calculator functions, we use generally the hash sign. Let's say we want the text trans in data something. Edit formula. See, we want to filter text trans table, text trans underscore in table, basis some conditions. And condition we know. We should have three parameters. From here, we can click the parameter. And if we are not added under any of the node, you will not be able to get this parameter option. Since we have added a functions as a container, then we are adding that's the reason it is available. From here, we can give the invent trans ID as one relation. I mean, one of the parameters, then another. Parameter would be voucher number. Voucher ID I'm using string. Third parameter, we want the transaction date. So I've added three parameters and the sequence also matters. Because if we want to pass trans ID as a first, then it should be at the first. And if we do not want, we at the first and then we should use this down arrow, up arrow kind of logic. So this sequence definitely matters. Okay. And now we are trying to filter this text trans underscore in. So I can type the things manually also, but I'm to save the time. I'm using this function directly. Filter function, then this end condition. So since I want to pass three conditions, so I've used end, then text runs underscore in. Then here we are trying to pass the parameters. Instead of passing the actual value, first we are passing the parameters. So invent trans ID should be equivalent to what? Our parameters which we have added. Then voucher ID. Then date. So we have added these things. So to utilize this fu filter function, we should utilize the uh, this function and now uh, like saving it. And the important thing here, we should use uh, this text trans now and the cache memory. This is important part because if we use this cache memory here at the function level, what system will do? It will pass this text trans once and get the filter data. And basis that it will not rerun in the query level. I mean, every time it is not going to take much time. 
So wherever possible, we should use this uh, cache function, but uh, li with little care. So generally what we have done for text trans, similarly uh, logistic portional address, we have added the condition. So similarly, we can prepare multiple functions and then utilize that function from here. Let's say we have already prepared our join. We can add the calculator field here with the text trans underscore in. And while getting this data, we are going to use the our function. So since we have prepared one function here, functions, show details, we can see if we look at this at, uh, carefully, we can see invent trans ID as a string, then voucher ID, then trans date. These are the parameters to be passed to utilize this function. So add data source, then open the bracket, and we can pass our parameters one by one. And what parameter to be passed? Because we are trying to add below the join. So we should pass the invent trans ID first. So I can utilize this logic, cast invoice trans. So below the join, I should go below the join. Then from the join, I should pass the cast invoice trans data. This cast invoice trans. From here, I need to pass the invent trans ID. This value, comma. Another value is the voucher ID. So we'll pass the voucher ID from the header. This voucher. Similarly, then date needs to be passed. So date we have the trans date. Uh, instead of transit, there's an invoice date. OK, so we should pass this invoice date. So this way we have filtered this complete text trans. We have not written again. We are utilizing the function. So I'm just not saving this data because we have already added the text trans here. This is the text trans already added. So this is the way of doing like uh, we, first we should do the identify the main tables, do the join. And if we want to add anything there after, we should use similar functions. So actually, I want to show this thing in the book also so that you can correlate the things what we are trying to say. So can we create the on method with the arguments? So we said we can utilize the our own method. So here we had prepared the text trans as our method. So similarly, we have covered in the book about a function, how to add it. 
and it is given in detail like uh, how to add the parameters and then how to pass the value and get it. This is the parameter and how to utilize it. In the book, we have given the example of vendor group description. From the vendor group ID, we want the vendor description, group description. And to understand the GST tax also, we have given this case 008 if I'm saying. So it's like uh, it's covered in the cases section. So here, how to get the data from the text trans tax document. So that is explained for the when invoice jet, when invoice trans and tax trans table. So similarly, we can utilize the cast invoice jet, cast invoice trans. So here we can see it is explained in the similar way. Hope it is visible properly. So why I'm trying to see you here, we have documented the things similar way, trans ID, voucher ID, trans date, and then we pass this value here. Again, the reference is given back to it, like how to, uh, you can utilize that concept 16. From there, we have come here also. Then how to pass this inventory trans ID ledger voucher and all those things. And then thereafter, we have also explained like from that text trans how to get the particular CGST amount, SGST amount. These are the further things we should consider. But my focus is not on this complete text value. My main focus was to how to add a join. Now I want to show you the performance trace also like uh, earlier how it was showing and now how it has been improved. So to see the query generated, like how to identify where the report is lacking, uh, lacking I mean, where is the performance gap? So to utilize it, we can go to the configuration, user parameters. Then we should enable this option, collect query statistics, so that we can get the executed SQL and duplicated queries. And this execution trace format should be debug trace format. At least uh, these two things is required to generate the performance trace. Then OK. So this is not specific for any of the configuration. It is for com all configuration. So we should enable it once. Then I'm trying to run, uh, generate this report. Uh, since it is a register kind of data, so I'm given some parameter like from 17 till today. Okay, so there was some. Let me generate from this. Uh, give me a minute. Yeah, so I have started again. OK, so we have already generated this report. We can see this report is only having uh, like 18 records. 
and uh, if we go to the model mapping designer from here we can see the performance trace i am taking the latest one OK, so from here, if we see this detected number of duplicate query is 350. So for that, just 18 records. It is uh, using this duplicate query multiple times. Why it is showing like that? Because we have utilized this trans text trans from the relation. So it is calling the same 90 times. And duplicacy is 72 times because 18 times it is running uh, for one time first time and then 72 times it is running as a duplicate. So that should be avoided. Similarly, it is using this relation and wherever it is using the relation, you can see the duplicacy in the query. So it is trying to filter this complete record basis some condition. So that's the, that's the reason we have utilized that function. So if we use that function, these duplicate query will not be part of it. It will not come. So similarly, I want to generate one more report where I have generated for the purchase site and where we have used the functions as well. So that from there you can understand there is an how it is actually utilizing and not giving the duplicate queries. So uh, similar for the purchase side, if I go, we had utilized the approach of this functions. In the purchase table, we take the base purchase register, we take the base of vend invoice trans, and to add any of the further tables, for the text trans, we have utilized the function the way I have explained earlier. Similarly, we, if we want, let's say the pool ID, so we have utilized the function of pool where we are passing the purchase ID and we are getting the purchase pool. So this way and here, if we look at this pool, we can see first or null filter, purge table, we are filtering the purge table basis the purge ID as a parameter. And it is in cache memory. Similarly, others we have also kept in the cache memory. If I try to generate this report, this report uh, like uh, just see. No parameter I have given. It should generate for all the lines. Uh, this report we have prepared in the CSV format, but uh, will demonstrate in the Excel itself. At the time it is generating, I'm just uh, covering one more concept so that we can save our time. Uh, so sometimes we got the requirement like uh, we want a sim single report where we want the data from the sales invoice and also from the posted stock transfer. It means two different data sources. So 
it's a very common thing in uh, like let's say we want to generate the invoice data so there we want the data from the sales invoice also from our posted stock transfer if we talk about the ev bill we might also require the vend invoice trans data vend invoice data so these are the example like where a single report a single data structure can require multiple tables multiple data sources so uh, we know that if we talk about the document number in the sales invoice it will be it will be the invoice number but if we talk about the transfer shipment the number will be the transfer shipment id shipment number So how to present both the things in a single field and how to make that type of report. So I'm just showing you that. Model how to prepare that kind of report. So this is a sales summary report we want and this report. Uh, required only data from the. Uh, header level data like there are two main tables. Cash invoice jar and invent transfer jar. This is for stock transfer invoices. And we want the data from both of the table. But we want this data to be saved in one of the fields. Let's say if I talk about the order number. For sales order, it will be sales order number for a stock transfer order. It will be stock transfer order number transfer order ID. So how to save in a single field that kind of report we can also develop. So how to make that happen? So for the cost invoice here, we have added multiple calculated fields below this with the same name. Let's say 001 order number STOSO. We have added one calculated field by clicking here, this one and add. And in this field, we have saved the at the rate sales ID. It means sales ID from this cost invoice here table. So what we have done, we have created our own fields and saved the required data. Let's say if I talk about the date, the date should come from the. Sales table created date, so we have taken this date. And similar if we want to showcase for the stock transfer. Here also we have added the same field 001 order number, but the it is tagged to the transfer ID. It means same field we have created in both the tables and then. We have just given the references. And after giving this logic. We have an option of list join. So what it do? Uh, it takes the record list, multiple record list and make a common join. And in the uh, you can say it is a union kind of join. In the SQL, we use the union join. So we put a table below the another table and match the columns also. If we just imagine we have taken all the cost invoice data and invoice transfer data, and then we make some common fields so that if we add one table below the another table, we should get the common columns. Since we have created the common columns in both the tables, so how to utilize it? Add root. Then list join. We have a function of list join. In the list join, we pass that list one, then list two. In the list one, let's say I'm passing this cash invoice jet. And in the list two, I'm passing this cash when it uh, invent transfer jet. And then OK. After utilizing this join, if I go inside it, I can see the calculator field common fields. These are the common fields. That's the reason it is showing. If I go to the fields, it will show only the common fields like data area ID created by generated date time. Because these fields are already there in both the tables. But it will not show you the invoice number, invoice date because it is not common in both the tables. Although it will look like it is taking from invent transfer jet, but it is not the case. It contains both the values because we have utilized this list join. And then we need to bind this list join to this one and then individual fields. 
So this we have also tried to cover in the book and explain the things like how to utilize the list join functionality. This is the requirement. Like, is there any function to create union of two or more tables? So we explained the list join functionality of cache invoice jar and event transfer jar and how to utilize it. And for better understanding, we have given the case of how to get this case. If we go to this case, it is telling us how to combine records from two tables in the same field. Here we have given this example in little more depth because we want the not only customer general table, we also want the line level data. I mean complete sales register and stock transfer register as well. And then make the uh, required fields. Let's say doc date, doc number, customer name. Similarly, we added below this also. And then after getting these things, we have utilized the list join function. After getting this data, you can see the common fields and we have utilized it. So these are the way to make the multiple joins. I mean, union kind of join. Now coming back to my previous point, like which I was showing the performance trace for this report. So I can see this report is generated here. This report took little time, but the reason is very clear. It is having 10,000 records. And all the required fields like in voucher number, date, invoice, ID, these things. The purpose is to show like what is the performance trace generated for it. If I go to the model mapping. I can go here. And designer. See the performance trace generated. Right now. From the performance trace, we can also see the time consumed by the system at which node so that we can identify that node and start focusing on that, how to minimize it, how to make the changes. And let's see if we see this one. Queries, queries run uh, 1173 times, but there's no duplicacy. Even we should avoid these many type of like query it should also not run this many times. We can utilize one logic. Let's say when invoice trans we have, we have the when invoice to, uh, text trans also. We can make a join of these tables so that it won't run multiple times. And thereafter we should do some grouping also so that we can get the equivalent number of records which in when invoice trans is having. So that is one of the way we can focus on. But here we can see. Since we have used the function, we are not having any duplicate query, which we were having in the previous process, previous configuration. And how much time it is taking at which stage we can see from here. It took 25, 1.28 percentage of total time in the function. In this function, if I see text trans took the most time, like 15.4. Similarly, I can see from here where it is taking what time, like in the when invoice trans. While running, it is taking 68.8% total time. Then from here, we can understand like where it is actually taking time. It is taking 6.37% time to get the FA number. And sometimes we can also decide like if it, uh, if the system is taking more time at particular field and if we don't require it much, then we can uh, think about the dropping that field also. And if we still require, we should think about the more optimized way. Sometimes what we do, if it requires multiple tables and all those things, we ask the developer to prepare a method in the this table itself. Or a separate method where we can call and pass some value and get the required data. So that will not run in the query level. It will run in the memory level. So that is also another way of doing it. 
to reduce this time. Uh, now we can have the question because I have covered the most transaction related things. What I had planned for today. So I think uh, yeah. it is little complex thing which we saw today because it will definitely require a lot of time to practice and identify the best way of uh, doing the same. So if we have any queries, we can uh, you can ask. Great. Thank you, Neeraj. So yeah, if you have any question, you can ask or raise your hand. Type the question. If you if you are not able to ask, you can type the questions. Give any bad. Any questions we have? All right. I think if you don't have any question, then we will wrap up and we will give five minutes to the participants or can. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think we don't have any questions. We will publish this video in YouTube after one week in our YouTube channel. And thanks once again for joining the weekend. So yeah, thank you, Neeraj. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a nice and lovely weekend ahead. Yeah, thank you, Dean.